In today's tutorial, let's work on the crochet scallop top together. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we have a crochet scallop top and this is a really fabulous idea. Has a little bit of sleeve work but don't let that worry a little bit and it has a little bit of a fancy work. I'm going to be breaking down this pattern step by step because the instructions on this particular one are pretty intimidating but the reality is once you break it down by step by step you realize how easy this item is. So let's uh, stay tuned. Let me take you through the steps of learning more about this project. So my yarn of choice for this is the Karen Simply Soft and this is called Ombre. The whole line is called Ombre and you'll see that it has really kind of neat transitional colors. And this is called Saturday Blue Jeans within the Ombre line and when you see my finished example it's actually pretty casual and I'm gonna be using that today. You're also gonna need a size I 5.5 millimeter crochet hook today in order to play along. So let's go through the ins and outs of this pattern. First of all, it's available in sizes small all the way to two extra large. Okay, so that's what we have here today and uh, it's not a hard pattern in order to work with and uh, today's pattern I am going to be doing the small on camera with you and you can just substitute the information that is available in this pattern to be able to follow along. We have a lot of instructions and it's very intimidating. I know I'm speaking with my Jeannie. She loves these kind of things and so she was quite intimidated with the setup row and there's a lot of chain ones and spaces and whatever but when you severely break this down you realize that it's actually a repeat pattern and it's not so hard. So what we're going to be doing today is that I'm gonna, I've drawn up a diagram. I've done a few of them actually and I'm gonna be walking you through that particular process. Now remember that when you see for example chain 74 and then the next one's 88, 102, 116, 130. These are the sizes of small, medium, large, extra large and two extra large. So you have to substitute that information. So what I highly recommend for you is that if for example say you wanna go for the large so it'll be 102. So highlight the 102 and every time you see something like this so you'll see it here again. It's the middle one there 13 would be the, the large size there. So you just have to do that and once you do that it becomes really quite easy. Now the sleeves are really quite easy itself because the reality is is that the sleeve um, for example there's only actually one uh, extra row of scallops added to the sleeve. So no matter what size that you're gonna end up with all of the sleeves will be the exact identical to each other no matter what size. So let's uh, begin and let me show you some of the diagram work and then we're going to continue. So the pattern consists of a setup row. So we have a chain of a multiples of counts and it tells you what those multiples are in this particular pattern. It said that the multiples were 14 and then it says chain multiples of 14 plus 4 for the setup row. The plus 4 is the turning chain area in the back. Okay in order to keep this pattern in balance. So even though it gives you all the measurements that you would want to do for the for the actual panel of 74, 88, etc. If you are chaining in multiples of 14 you can change any sizes. So if you want to go even bigger to maybe three, four, or five extra large you just have to keep it in sequence in order of multiples of 14 in order to make that happen. So that's pretty cool. So we have a diagram that I created here and there's a lot of chain spacing and there's a lot of skipping of this and double uh, two, uh, double crochet two together. But when you look at it from a diagram point of view you realize how simple this item is and once I, I literally I just went a couple rows and then I had this in my mind and it was a pretty easy and quick to do. I can tell you honestly my particular one that I did was done in only five hours. That's how fast this item is. So what we're gonna be doing today is that we're going to be chaining in our multiples of 14 but I'm gonna we're gonna stick to what it's suggesting. So it's chaining of 74. This is just showing you the repeat pattern on the pattern. So we're gonna come in we're gonna double crochet chain one skip two and then double crochet, skip one only, chain one, put two together. So here's the thing. When I was trying to follow this along in the written instruction I was getting confused why sometimes I had to skip two chains and sometimes I only had to skip one and then I had to skip three down here. So once I drew it out I realized that the fan work expands over and what it does is it kind of it reaches over to the next stitch. So therefore you're skipping two chains here because the fan is reaching over. And so once I realized that it's pretty easy. Now the only time you have to worry about this skipping of three chains is right in the very beginning because once we get this pa pattern established in row number one every row is exactly identical to each other. So it's row one, 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 one all the way until we get to the top 
of the bottom of the sleeve area. So what we're going to do is that we're going to work our way up like that and let me show you another diagram. So eventually we're gonna work our way up and we're gonna hit the sleeve line and there's dimensions here and that's provided in the pattern and we'll talk about that as we get to it and you're gonna work your way all the way up to there and you're gonna stop and we're gonna add sleeves and all we're doing to add sleeves is that we're making this panel bigger by jetting out in one direction and jetting out in the other. So what's gonna happen here is that we're gonna work our way and you'll see all of the scalloping. It does this formation. So it's gonna tell you at the end to stop Okay, so you're gonna stop right here and it says with another piece of string, uh, string you're gonna add 14 to the other side of the, of the same row and you're gonna fasten off so that the 14 chains are just sitting there. It then says to pick up and chain 18 so you're gonna come out, you're going to then come up and you're going to start doing the setup row again. So the setup row was back over here when we were working on the chain. So this is a new chain work that doesn't exist at the time and what we're going to do is that we're gonna follow this. This is only one scallop. So it's basically from here to here. On the other side here, okay, this is the same thing. So this is the other side of the scallop on this side. So it's creating an additional scallop per side. So it says to chain 14 on this side, chain 18 on this side. The difference, reason, the reason for that really is that you have a turning chain here which was added more stitches and because of that you have to have a longer chain in order to turn around to come back. So when you're going to do this, so we're gonna chain 18 and then we're gonna start coming back. So you're gonna just come across and you're gonna do the setup row for the, when you're on the on this uh, chain. When you're in this area, you're just doing exactly what you did before and then when you hit the chain area, you go back to the setup row and follow it again. And so basically this is how we expand it and then we just continue then for the remainder of the um, the top as a wider formation all the way until you get to the top and then the way that you finish off at the top matters and, and I'll explain that in a moment as well. So once we get to the top what's gonna happen is that you're going to leave nine feet of yarn left on to things. So you're, you can fast, you can kind of not fasten off but just leave nine feet of yarn available to you and then you can jump to the other panel and leave nine feet of yarn. So nine feet of yarn is gonna be hanging off this corner and then nine feet of yarn is gonna hang off this corner. This is gonna make the right sides face out. Okay, so when you're wearing it you'll be looking at the good side and with this particular pattern it really doesn't matter which side you're looking at. Both are gonna be equal. So with this nine feet of yarn, what it's telling us to do is to create this look of doing the scallop but only just until we hit the neckline which is about 12 inch, inch, inches of space. So when I go to look at this uh, particular item on her, what you will notice is that in two spots, if you do not like open shoulder work, just sew it sh shut completely and don't even worry about doing what we're about to show you. It, but if you like it like this, all this is is that there's one scallop here, one scallop here and this is the edge. That's all that it's joining on this particular item. So that's why you only see me having, so there's the top of one scallop, the top of another scallop and there's the edge just like that. So we're gonna follow exactly the same instructions okay of going up and down but when we hit to a top of the scallop we reach over and secure the top of the scallop on the opposite side. The, we then fasten off right here and then weave in your ends. You then come back to this side, do the exact same thing with this knife and feet of yarn start and attach across and then this is the middle of one scallop and this is the other middle of one scallop and you stop. So that's how you exactly put this thing together and again if you don't like that concept just sew it completely shut with this nine feet of yarn and you obviously don't need nine feet of yarn if you're gonna sew it shut completely but it's completely optional. Once we're done that you're going to then sew in the rest of your project. So I put axes, so these match these two edges together and sew them together, match these two edges together, sew together, match these two edges together and sew and match these together and sew. So what we want to do is that once you're finished sewing then when you're uh, done the sewing you're gonna turn this project uh, the other direction so that the all the seam work appears on the inside of this. So that's my very long introduction today. So let's say uh, get started and we're going to work on getting you started with the setup row and then I'll show you how to do row number one which you carry up all the way to the sleeves and then we'll meet back up at the sleeve area, show you how to expand and then we'll meet you at the top and then you're gonna do that for two panels and then we'll just show you how to put it together from that point. 
So let's start off with the setup row. We're gonna start our chain. Remember I'm doing the small size here on camera with you. Substitute the information on the pattern for the size that you want. So you can either do 74 which I'm doing, 88 which is uh, medium, large is 102, extra large is 116 and 2 extra large is 130. Remember these are multiples of, of um, 14 if you'd like to change the size even making kid sizes. That's completely up to you. You just don't do as many chains. So let's begin and we're going to come along and do our chain and then we're gonna do our setup row and then every row starting from this row going all the way up completely to the top is exactly identical but we're gonna go to the sleeve area, add another set of scallops on both sides and then continue right up to the neck. So here's an example of one of the panels. I'm working on it behind the scenes to make sure I understood the pattern but you can see the scalloping going down. You can see how it matches the, the visual pattern that I had and this is what we're trying to achieve today. Leaving an extra long tail just so you can use that to sew in. You wanna do that with these kind of projects. You wanna make sure you take care of that and using a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook today. We want to uh, chain and you're just gonna chain. So one, two, three, four, five. Go to the size that you want. I'm gonna go to 74 for mine and then meet me back here and we'll do the setup row together. So I now have my chain complete 74 and now we're going to continue with the setup row and we're gonna work our way back across this line. So these skipping, especially right in the middle, the skipping of three never happens once we get beyond this row. So this is what the setup row difference is with row one and setup row. And so we just have to be able to follow it along. So this is really establishing our, our chevron shapes, our scallops and then in row number one in all rows above that they're all just maintaining exactly what is already there. So let's continue with the setup row and this is part two. So you're going to go fourth chain from the hook. So look at your work and count back. So just the uh, one underneath. So one, two, three and four. Get the back uh, loop only of the chain and I want you to double crochet in there. By getting that back loop you'll create a nicer finish on the bottom of the top. So you're gonna double crochet in there. You're going to chain one and then we're going to skip two chains. So one, two and you're gonna double crochet into the next one. So this is the partial top of a scallop. So whenever you're in the top of a scallop you're always gonna sw uh, switch the, uh, switch, uh, skip over two in this particular area. So let's begin again. We're going to chain one and we're going to skip one stitch and we're gonna do two together but watch what we do with two together. So we're gonna wrap the hook and going, skipping one, go to the second over, pull through the yarn and, pu and pull through two and hold it. Now what I want you to do is go back to the chain and skip to the fourth available chain. So one, two, three. So skip over those three. Go to the fourth, wrap the hook going into that uh, chain, pull through, pull through two and now you have three loops on here and pull through all three loops. So those two just became one. So that is the bottom of a scallop just like that. So let's begin and we're gonna move up and we're gonna go to the top of the scallop next. So we're gonna chain up one. We skip one chain one and go to the second one over for a double crochet and now we're about to hit the top of a scallop already. That's how quick it is. So we're gonna chain one but watch. We're gonna skip two chains and in the third one we want to put a lot of stuff in there. So we want to put a double crochet followed by a chain one. Put another double crochet in that one followed by a chain one and put another double crochet in that one followed by a chain one. So there should be a total of four double crochets in a row there with chain ones that separate them. So now we're gonna start going down. So this is what it kinda looks like. So we were at the top of a scallop on this side. We sunk down right in the middle and now we went back over the top. So now we're gonna go down the other side. So let's chain one first. We're going to skip two chains, one, two and double crochet into the next. Okay, chain one and now we're gonna do that two together like we did way over here, right here. So we chained one already so we're gonna skip one stitch, go to the second one over and we're gonna do two together. So we're gonna wrap the hook, pull through, pull through two and hold it and now skip to the fourth empty one. So my chain is kinda twisting here. I'm just gonna untwist it and I'm gonna count. So one, two, three and go to the fourth, wrap the hook 
and going into the fourth one over, pull through, pull through two and hold and now you have three loops on your hook, pull through all three and that's done. So that was the very bottom of a scallop once again. So let's move our way to the top again. So chain one, you're going to skip one stitch and double crochet into the next. Chain one and now we're ready to go up over the top of a scallop. So we're going to skip two chains, so one and two, go to the third and you're gonna put in a double crochet followed by a chain, oops, double crochet followed by a chain one and double crochet back into that same one again followed by a chain one, back into that same one again followed by a chain one and you wanna ca carry on to that till you get to the four double crochets that you need in that top. Just like that. Okay, so you got, so you got the top of the scallop. So you're gonna chain one to start again. You're gonna skip two chains, go to the third one down. Okay, so whenever you're in the top of a scallop just remember that you're always skipping two chains because the scallops make up the space. Then chain one, skip one and do two together once again. So go to the second over and now you're gonna skip to the fourth empty one. So one, two, three and four and put these two together for the very bottom of the scallop. Chain one, skip one, double crochet in the next. Chain one, now you're gonna do the top of a scallop. So you're gonna skip two this time and the third one over you're going to double crochet. Chain one, double crochet because you're in the top of a scallop. Chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet, chain one. So what I want you to do no matter what size you're working on I want you to carry on in that same fashion going all the way across and you'll have like a rippling kind of effect and you will see that in the bottoms here these are joining together and you'll see one standing alone in the middle and then your scallops there on the top. So carry on and I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming up near to the end of the row and I have my two together. I've already chained one and now I'm working my way back up. Now this top is gonna be part of a scallop and a half on the top. So I'm gonna skip one and I'm gonna double crochet second one over. I'm gonna chain one and your very last stitch which is the second one or which you're gonna skip two anyway but your very last one is going to be a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet. That's it. Okay so the top of the scallops they were four but on the ends they're going to be three. Now you're gonna say to yourself well you kinda doesn't look that way on the on the beginning. I followed the pattern exactly as is. It doesn't exist on this side here for this particular setup row which is really not necessary anyway. It's not a big deal for this particular pattern. So let's turn our work and we're going to review row number one which is the same row for your entire pattern until we get to the top of the sleeve area and then we're gonna expand our stitches but it's continuing to follow the same idea going across. You'll find this quite easy from this point forward. So whenever we start row number one every time that we do it it's always gonna be the same. So we're gonna chain up four which counts as a double crochet plus chain one. So one, two, three, there's your double crochet and chain one that's your space. So you're gonna come into these, see these spaces that are in between you're gonna come right into the first space that's directly underneath and you're going to double crochet into that space followed by a chain one and into that same space one more time for a double crochet so like so. So here's what the outsides will always look like. So the first one will be right in an edge and the next two will be right into a space. This is not the same on the other side just so that you're aware and you'll see that and when we get over there. So we're going to now chain one and we're gonna skip these two that are together and go right for these spaces. So we're gonna play in the spaces that are right on both sides of where these V and the next space. That's where we're gonna play for coming this forward. So whenever we're going in the down motion that's where we're gonna look. So we're gonna double crochet in the first chain space followed by a chain one and this time instead of doing and jumping over three to do the two together you're going to do two together once in this space and once in this space. So they're gonna bring those together. So just go right into the space, pull through, pull through two, 
So this is a double crochet two together. Come to the next space on the other side, wrap the hook going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. So now you got three loops on the hook, pull through all three and you see you just matched exactly what you see below. You're going to chain one and work your way up the scallop. So here's the next one that we're gonna play. It's a chain one space. So just go in there. See how it, you just work for the spaces and then we're gonna start doing the scallop at the top. So let's chain one first and then I'll explain this to you. So we have four st uh, strand or four posts that are in here. You're gonna play right directly in the middle. So you got two here, two here. You're just gonna spread it open with your finger. Okay, there's a chain one space there anyway and you're gonna plant four of those posts in there. So double crochet, chain one, same spot, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet just like that. So you got your four in there and so every time you're on the top of a scallop it's right in the middle here. So then you're gonna chain one and let's work our way down. So look for the spaces that you're gonna play. Where are you gonna play? You're gonna play here right with both fingers and here. Okay, so we're gonna put our first one in. The double crochet stands by itself followed by a chain one and then these two are gonna come together. So wrap the hook, go into the next space and wrap that hook and come into the next space and let's put those together. It's a two together stitch, chain one and come to the next space that's available to you. It's a double crochet standing by itself and then chain one and we're ready for a top of another scallop. So here there's four, just go right into the middle one like middle space between the two middle ones there. So it's double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So that's the middle of your scallop, chain one and now we're ready to go down again. So do you see the up and down motion that you're doing? It's pretty easy right? So let's play again. So where are the spaces here that you're gonna play? Right here is one and here is another. So let's go. We're gonna put a double crochet by itself first followed by a chain one. The two ones here in the middle are gonna come together. Two together, double crochet chain one and double crochet into the next space. Like so, chain one and now you're ready for a top of a scallop. See, that's pretty easy right? So the tops of the scallop, remember that there's gonna be four double crochets in there in there that's separated by chain ones. So what I want you to do is I want you to do the remainder of the row like this. This is row number one and all of the rows are identical to this going forward all the way up to the sleeve but I will review to get you started once again. Make sure that you do clearly understand that and then I'm gonna leave it to you to get to the bottom of the sleeve. So go all, all the way to the end of the row and I'll see you there in just a moment. So as you move your way across the line you're gonna run into and remember this one is a partial one on this side this, and we have to handle that slightly different than what we handled the other one. So we're in the down motion. Remember we're playing in the spaces so the next uh, one are two together. So bringing that two to middle together. Chain one. You're going to go into the next space for a double crochet that sits by itself chain one and this is what's different on this side. So in the very top, okay, in the very top there we're going to place in the three trebles or doubles that are by themselves with chain ones in the middle. So it's gonna be right in the top chain. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So that's what's gonna happen on this row. So in the last one what we had on this side here if you remember is that we went and did the first chain out and then the first one appears in a space where this one here on the ends these all go into the top of a turning chain. So let's uh, begin, turn our work and let's try this row one more time and then I'm gonna leave this to you and I'll see you at the sleeve area. So let's begin this row which is a repeat. So let's quickly speed up. We're going to chain four always to begin and we're gonna come to the first space and we're going to double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So they're both in there. Okay, so then chain one and you're gonna work your way down. So there's the spaces and there's the middles. You just look for it. So the first one's a double crochet by itself followed by a chain one. The two middles are gonna come together. So bring those together. followed by a chain one. The next one is by itself in the next space and chain one 
and then the next one here, here's your scallop. Look for the one right in the middle. Just go right into the space with the double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. Okay, so that's your top, chain one, and then coming down the other side again. So it's right in the next space, chain one, bring the next two together, chain one, and then come up the other side. So double crochet by itself, chain one, and then you're at the back of the top of the scallop, uh, scallop again. So it's gonna be four by itself. So one with a chain one, two with a chain one, three with a chain one, and four. Okay, chain one and work your way back down. So go to the end of the row. Let's, uh, I'll show you how to finish that uh, row off again and then we will carry on and I will pick you back up where we're gonna do the sleeves next. So I'm coming up to the end of the row. I'm in the middle of the ones that you can see here. A chain one and I work my way back up followed by a chain one and the final one is in the third chain. Okay, so remember we chained up four and one of them was a chain one space. So I wanna come into the third chain up and I want to get into that one and that's where I'm gonna double crochet, chain one. I'm going to double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So you're just gonna carry on doing that all the way and what you're gonna end up with is a large panel and we're, let's uh, review the dimensions and the heights that you need to go to but this is what it will look like until we get to the top and uh, the bottom of the sleeve area and then we're gonna pick up and we're gonna expand it to make room for sleeves. So what I want you to do is that we're gonna come right back and I'm gonna tell you what the dimensions are that you need to get to and then I'll see you back at the top of the sleeves. So now you're going to follow this pattern up and it says to do the repeat pattern until it measures and you see 12, 13, 13, 14 and 14. These are the inches. So for my size of 74 because this is just like this, for the small it's, it's 12 inches. For medium 13, large is 13, for extra large it's 14 and for two extra large it's 14. So I need this panel to go all the way for me all the way to 12 inches. Okay, and I just have it relaxed lying on something when I go to take that measurement so I don't wanna overly stretch it because you can do yourself a disservice and stretch it just to try to save yourself some rows but then when you go to wear it, it will not work. So when I, uh, when you come back, you should have this done and then I'm gonna pick up at the sleeve area and then I'm gonna show you what to do at that point. So now we're back, we have our block panel and I have mine to be 12 inches tall and I still have my work on, on the one side and I need you to leave that on there. And what we're going to do in here, once we get to the height that we need, we need to add on extra chains onto both sides. So right where this is still on, we're going to add a chaining of 18. So it said to stop right where we are. So I'm gonna just do this tutorial in sequence if it says it on the pattern. And then on the other side we need to add 14. But how do we add 14 over there when the yarn is over here? So it says with another ball of yarn uh, add 14 chains and then fasten off. But can I tell you a secret? What I would do is just grab the strand from the same ball of yarn from either the outside or the inside depending on how you grabbed it. And what we're going to do is that we're gonna grab the opposite side that has nothing and we're gonna add 14 chains there and then we're gonna fasten off. And then what we're gonna do is then we're gonna continue with this side, add our 18 and then we're gonna follow this across. So right where it's got the chain work as we go across then it's the setup row again with following the chain work. So there's gonna be one additional scallop being added on one side and then on the other side here, okay, there's gonna be another scallop on the other side. So this is just an easy way to be able to tell if, you're got, if you've got it right or not. So let's begin and let's uh, just keep it where we are and let's begin. So this is where I've stopped and I'm not done my chain 18 yet. I just wanna pull up a loop and with the same yarn ball, I grab this, uh, the other side of the strand, okay, which is either, mine is always on the, I always grab from a center pull, so mine's always on the outside. I wanna create an extra long string and I can use that to sew in afterward and all I wanna just do is that I want to grab the corner and just attach it at the fourth chain sorry, the third chain up. Okay, remember there's always chaining of four. So third chain up, I want to attach with a slip stitch. So just pull through and I wanna chain 14. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 
12, 13 and 14. And what I want to do is that I wanna finish that off now. So you gotta be very careful here that you don't pull too tight or on anything. But all I'm just gonna do is gonna grab my scissors and I'm gonna cut a little bit of an extra long tail so I can use to sew that in. And all I'm just gonna do is that I'm just gonna pull it over and I'm just gonna put it, pull it through the loop like this and just pull it tight. And that's it. Okay, so this one here is now standing by itself. So when you come across this, you're gonna be following the pattern as is and then this is gonna be the new setup row for this round. So what we're going to do is put this back over here and what we're gonna do is continue along in this row. So in this row here, we have to add 18 chains. So the 18 is the setup row but we have to have a, a turning chain so therefore it ends up being 18. So we're gonna add, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. So once your eighteen is there, you're now good to go. So at this point, you're going to have your block here. You'll have chain on one side, you'll have a chain on the other, and now this will be your sleeves as you go and do your work. So let's turn our work completely and we're gonna work across this chain like it's a setup chain as if we're starting a project right from the very beginning. So just like we started before, we wanna go four chain from the hook. So count back, so one, two, three, and four, and I want you to double crochet there. Treat this, okay, on the back loop like it's going to be a visible edge. So just keep on the back loop only of your chain. So now you're going to chain one, and you're going to skip two, just like you did before, and you're going to double crochet into the next chain followed by a chain one and now these are gonna, the next one we're gonna skip and we're gonna go the second one over and we're gonna create that two together. Okay and remember we have to skip three, one, two, three and go to the fourth for the other side of that two together and then pull through all three loops and then chain one Skip one chain, second one over. I'm gonna double crochet. Skip uh, chain one and now this is going to be reaching to the top of the scallop. So just reach up there and it's going to be the middle one right here. So just go right into the space. So just like it was a top of a scallop, see how you got four? This time you only have three here but just go right into the space here and create your scallop. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and chain one. So that's your top of your new scallop. So before the scallop was only a partial, now it's just become full and now you have a new scallop starting on the other side. So let's uh, begin. You're just going to continue this row just like you had been and again just coming to the next space for a double crochet, chain one and then put the next two together. Okay, so just carry on and what I'm gonna do is I'll meet you at the near close to the end of this row where we'll start up the other chain that's on the other side. And so all this do, this is doing is just making this panel slightly wider so that you have some sleeves to work with. So carry on and I'll see you near the close to the end of this uh, row where we'll finish up the other side of the chain. So now coming up to the other side and I'm working my way back up and technically I would be running into an edge if it was the regular size but now I'm making it bigger and this time I wanna do the scallop right into the actual chain one space. Before we had been going into the top of the turning chain, this time I want you to go right into a space and create a full scallop. So chain, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. So there's your four. So now what we're gonna do is that we're going to skip two and turn the chain over so you get the back loop only and you're going to do a double crochet by itself. So we're doing the setup row once again and chain one. Okay, skip one and second one over. You're going to do a two together so you're gonna get that one plus you're going to skip uh, three of its buddies and go to the fourth for the other side. Chain one, skip one and you're going to do a double crochet by itself. Chain one and now you're just going to skip two which is the next two and go to the final and remember what we did in the final. So we just 
uh, uh, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one and double crochet. So now you're back to where you were started before but instead of your panel being here it's now extended on this side and it's extended on the other side to give you a much wider panel. So now you need to create this length. Now going to the neck and let's review how many uh, times that you need to do that. I don't know how many times but I can tell you that what the dimensions need to be and then we're gonna meet you then back at the top where we're gonna start doing more of the, the uh, final assembly of this project. So now back on the instructions and I just showed you how to increase to get all the way across and so now you need to measure the sleeve until the sleeve then has these one of these dimensions. So this is ex exactly the same. So small, medium, large, extra large and two extra large. So in my case the sleeve area has to be nine inches. Okay right from the whole sleeve. So right where when you look at the, the other diagram that I had. Okay so this should be nine inches from here to here. So what I want you to do is that I need you to do two panels identical to this what you see and what we're going to do then is that once we're finished a panel make sure that you leave a minimum of nine feet of yarn minimum because we need to do use that yarn in order to uh, fat, uh, fix it to the neighbor. You can fasten off but I wouldn't I wouldn't because I think it would just not make sense. So just leave nine feet of yarn every time you finish one of these and leave nine feet of yarn on the other one and then we're gonna use both of those in order to put those together. So let's uh, carry on and I will see you at the top of this one. I have to finish this off camera first and then we'll be back and I'll show you how to do the assembly next. So now we're ready for the next part of our tutorial where we're gonna start doing the assembly process. So where you see these shapes, the triangle, the circle, the equal sign and the X, those edges will come together with a whip stitch. So then you'll force it. Here on the top it's slightly different is that the top of her outfit when you look at it from the photograph point of view you will notice that it's actual stitch work that is joined together. So if you do not like an open shoulder you can sew the whole thing shut if you wish. Okay or you can just follow along. So what's happened here is that you would have had to leave nine feet of yarn and one of the strands will be off to the one side. Okay so it'll be off to the one side and the other strand will be on the other item off to the other side of that. So if, if you've got these turned in a way that both of these strands are on the same side then it means that's wrong. Okay so you've gotta just flip it so that one strand is off to one side, one strand is off to another. It's about nine feet and we're gonna use that yarn in order to seal the deal. So when you look at here we're gonna join it twice and when you look at it on the photograph point of view is that on the edge scout on the edge that's where it's gonna join and then we're going to then do the same work across until we get to the top of the next scallop but when we do the next scallop when we're right in that chain one middle right after we do two we're going to join it with the middle one of the scallop on the other panel and then we're going to continue the work as normal until we get to the other scallop and we're gonna do the same thing there and that's where we're gonna finish. So that's why it's only nine feet of yarn. So what you're looking at in this photograph here or in my diagram is that we're going to directly attach to our neighbor across the road and then we're gonna do the scallop work and then when we get across the road again it's on the top of the next scallop we're gonna come back down and get the next scallop and that's where we're gonna finish that yarn. Once we do that one we're gonna do the exact same. We're gonna turn the project around. Okay. Turn the project upside down and use this strand then to attach to the neighbor on the other side. So both of these strands that's what those are, are there for. So let me demonstrate on how to do that. So let's begin. So one panel is right in front of me. The other one is completely opposite turned the other way and the yarn strand these are just loose ends from another part of the thing but the yarn strand from this side okay is on the other side of the project where we're gonna use that strand to do the other shoulder. So let's begin. We're going to chain up three. One, two, three. What's different about that? Last time we had to chain four. Well the one the fourth th this time is in the top of the first um, chain three here. Go into the chain three space. Go in there and pull through as a slip stitch and there is your chain four. So now I want you to come back down into the space like you did before and you're gonna do the scallop going like you normally would. So uh, double crochet and then chain one and double crochet. So now you're completely attached across the road. Okay. So now you're going to chain one and work your way down the scallop like you did before. So it's just double crochet in the next space chain one. This is the middle one is next. You're gonna make those two together. Chain one 
and then the next one is a double crochet by itself, chain one and now this is where we're going to attach to the next set of on the other side. Okay, so you got one and it's the next scallop on the other side. So let's go up. We're gonna do the first two double crochets. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now instead of chaining one now, I want you to come across, go to the chain one space on the opposite side and just yarn over and pull through. That is considered your chain one this time and then coming back down into the project do the rest of the scallop. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet and now you can see that you've attached it twice. So let's continue along. So chain one and come down to the next space, chain one, the next two are together like so and chain one and come up the other side, double crochet, chain one and here's the last scallop before you're finished. So you're gonna do the first two. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet and this time you're going to go right directly across the road again to the next scallop that's available right in the middle and you're gonna pull through and through and you're done. So this what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna trim our yarn. Okay, if you, you would have had nine feet you probably be close to the end of that. So just pull the yarn through and using a darning needle which I'll demonstrate in a bit on putting that together. So now you have your three spots. So if you're not happy with open shoulders just go along with the darning needle and don't even bother to do this last step but just sew it all together and then it will be completely shut like that. Okay, that's completely your business. So what I, what I want you to do is do the other shoulder the exact same way and then I'm gonna demonstrate on how to sew things together. Okay, I have both shoulders now done. The other one just took me a few moments, not very long. I wanna demonstrate on how to hide in loose ends. You're going to need a sharp darning needle like so because you want it to glide into the fibers not into spaces and so you'll have the most perfect finish if you can glide it into the fibers. So what you wanna do is that you wanna go into and glide it underneath but making sure that the needle is capturing in between plies and etc. for about an inch like so and then glide across. And then you're not gonna like reef on it so that you want it to keep its natural relaxed. You wanna go back in the other direction in a different path but very close to it because you if you go in the same path it'll fall out and then just ramming it through some fiber work. Okay, so that you really do want it into the fibers. So that was two and then coming back in the third direction again a different path but very close to it. Different set of fibers in a third direction. All of your loose ends should be done this way including the very starting strands that you had and then once you've gone in three times you can safely cut that right down into the project and you will never see where you stopped and started. So you'll have the most perfect finish there. So you wanna do that with all of your loose ends and let me demonstrate now on how to do whip stitching because now we have to join things together and let me bring up my diagram once again. So now that my tops are here, they're all joined now. Now I just gotta join. So don't join anything on the outside of here because you'll never get your arms through it. So now we just wanna fold it over and so we wanna match these edges. So what you can do is that you can just start here and just sew and whip stitch all like go down and down. I just put this just to demonstrate what size this is. This is typical for crochet where they're asking you to match sides. So I would start on the edge and work your way all the way down to the base and then fasten off and then start on the other side. So the reality is that you don't really have a lot of sewing left when you really think about it. And then any of the other loose ends that you had you want to do. So let's uh, fold our project in a way and when we go to fold this project when I classify this as the inside seam. So just when I go to lay it out this will be the inside of the project and when I'm done I'm just gonna fold it the other, I'm just gonna flip it the other way and therefore these seams that I'm about to apply to the work will appear on the inside of your project. So let's uh, begin. I'm gonna show you how to do the whip stitching. I wanna take the one side of an extra piece of yarn that is gonna be our sewing yarn and it matches the same colors that we're kinda working with anyway so it's good it's gonna blend and the other side of that strand I want you to put a slip knot like you were gonna, about to start crochet. So what I want you to do is that I want you to start on a seam. Okay, so don't go into gapping spaces. Okay, you wanna go right into chain work itself and go right into the chain and match the project 
stitch for stitch. It should be identical. So you're gonna pull through and when, don't pull it all the way through but what I want you to do is once you get to that slip knot, what you're about to do, insert the needle in and that'll lock that strand from ever popping out on you because it's gonna tie itself into position. Now what are you gonna do with this? You can either use a darning needle and sew it in later or if you sandwich it on top of the stitches when you go and just tracing it down as you go to sew this together if you leave it on the top it'll get stuck underneath this join. Therefore you will never have to deal with it. So you're just gonna move your way. Do not rush the process of, of skipping too many stitches as you sew and what you wanna do is that you don't wanna make it so tight that this is, the seam is not flexible because your body is flexible. So if you make the seam too tight and then your, your project will appear too rigid when you're wearing it not being very flexible on the edge. Okay, so you're just kinda giving it a bit of tension but you're not reefing on it. So all you're just gonna do is work your way down through the seam and follow it as it turns the corner into the armpit area. Now I've gone now about two inches here. So I'm just gonna safely cut that strand out because now it's underneath the stitches. If you feel more comfortable to hide it any other way that's your business to do that if you wish. Again this is your creativity. Uh, what I'm presenting online today is certainly um, just an idea but of course you can do what works for you. So just as you working your way down go into the stitches. Never go into a open gap space and just kind of match the stitches that you see. So I see I have a scallop here and I have a scallop here. So when I go to match I'm trying to get and making sure every stitch is aligning with each other properly so that it will sit properly on your body. Okay, so as I hit the corner, so I have another straggler here. I can either use a darning needle and get rid of that or I can just safely just trap it right underneath the position as I go. Again, that's completely up to you. So what I want you to do is go all the way down the seam line just matching things as you go and then I'm gonna meet you at the back and I'll show you how to, or at the bottom of this and I'm gonna show you how to hide in your loose ends and just uh, do what we just did with uh, being able to go back and forth three times and I'll see you down there in just a moment. I'm now all the way down to the bottom and all I just wanna do now is that I wanna tie this into a knot so it's in the bottom. So just kinda tie it so it's uh, good. The other strand is just a loose end that I need to take care of and just insert it through the loop. And that will lock it into position. So now what I wanna do is that I wanna go in and out of, the, out of the work three times. So again just what I showed you already before just glide in the fibers back and forth three times. So one, again don't pull it too tight going back in the other direction but it, through a different path through lots of fibers and two and three. So what I want you to do at this point is that I want you to do the other side and I want you to weave in all your or get rid of all your loose ends in your project and what I'm going to do is that I'm going to steam my project and I'll show you just a quick visual on what to do. I have a Conair steamer and all I'm just gonna do is just run a steamer right over top of it. It'll cause the stitches to relax and it will form to the body a lot better so the yarn will come back to its original kind of relaxation state and it will look better when you're wearing it as well. So without further ado let me show you now an example of my finished project and that's it for today. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.